Hi everybody. Welcome back. It's Anna. It is haul time. All right. I did some stress shopping. This isn't even all of it. I have an order coming my way, which is going to take a bit to get here. So I'll probably do a separate video of that. And honestly, I'm not even going to show you all of it. Um, this is just some of it. Mostly because uh, I just feel like these are the more interesting bits and they're cool items so I thought maybe I would just share with you in case you are looking for some new stationery ideas or possibly gift giving because I know it's getting close to Christmas. And I thought also, now that I'm saying that, um, that I might want to do sort of a mini gift guide for Christmas. Uh, to give you some suggestions in case you're looking for the stationary lover in your life or to get for yourself because we all deserve gift giving to ourselves. Why not? Um, treat yourself, right? Anyway, uh, yes, stress shopping. I have been having a rough couple of weeks, let me tell you. And what do I do? I go online in the middle of the night when I can't sleep and I place orders for things that have always been on my Christmas list or on my ongoing stationery list. Uh, this is just how I stress shop. I don't buy random things. I always just buy things that I've always wanted to get. Some of these were um, very intent purchases. Um, but at the same time, it's like I didn't need them right away, but I bought them anyway. So that's that's how I, I guess, uh, call it stress shopping. But um, I'm just going to dive right into it. Right now, Target has very cute things in their dollar section, which we all know as stationery lovers. That, that is a very popular place to go. I am recently very obsessed with pencils, especially because I started, not started, I have been listening to the Erasable Podcast. <laughs> Excuse me, I still have a cold. The Erasable Podcast. And uh, they just, they talk about pencils all day, every day in all of their podcasts. And I love it. I love learning about the minute details of it. And I've always been, <clears throat> excuse me, a lover of pencils. So I picked up these because these looked very festive and very pretty. They're foiled and lacquered. Very, very pretty. And funny enough, the uh, the guys over at uh, the Erasable Podcast, um, I'll link that uh, podcast below if you're interested, did say that the uh, pencils in the dollar section of Target are very decent. And then I thought these were super fun. This one says sketches. They come in a pack of six. Ideas, etc. Notes, plans, and lists. I love that. They look so pretty. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, minimal, colorful. They just they look nice. I haven't tried them out yet, but I will very soon. Um, they look decently centered, the graphite. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm guessing the graphite's probably going to be like a 2H or something like that, which is not my favorite graphite. But, um, you know, for like a dollar a pack, that's not bad. I got a set of um, MT Washi. I realized that I did not have... Um, a lot of solid colors and I like these because they're thin which works out perfectly I don't need that much and just layer they come in all sorts of colors so these are the warm colors and then this side is all the cool colors so I love that they kind of give you a variety on each color uh, wheel there some brights some neutrals warms you know cools and uh, I got this off Amazon which you can find. Uh, it did take a while to ship just because it was shipping from China. Because I started getting some really nice pencils, which I'll show you next, 
I wanted to get some pencil caps just to protect the lead so I can carry them in my mod case and my pencil case without it ruining the leather and just you know, getting the graphite everywhere, breaking the tip and all that. So these come in a pack of four from um, Amazon as well. And they're just these like aluminum caps, which work out perfectly. So I got those. Um, <clears throat> going back to the dollar spot, uh, how cute is this? Today, tomorrow, next week. They are perforated both at the top and on the side. And I thought this would be cute to just keep on my desk for note taking. I've found that I have been trying to like keep things off my desk, but at the same time, when I need a post-it note, it's not there. And I'm rummaging for five minutes trying to find a post-it note to make notes. So I thought that this would be a great thing to just have on my desk so that way I can just make quick notes, rip it off. Take it with me. And then these were a couple things from the dollar spot. This was three dollars. These two I think were a dollar. This has like my week and I thought this would be a great um, one for meal planning. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm, I think I caught another cold. Um, so you can see why I'm just having like a rough few weeks just because I keep getting sick. I don't know why. I work for a school, so that's probably why. Um, and then this is a cute one. I love the color scheme. Love that. It's just simple and gridded. Just as agenda, a nice thick pad. So I needed to um, <clears throat> revamp my um, notes and things like that. Um, more on the pencil um, kick here. I went to Kinokuniya yesterday after a meetup with some friends and I decided to get a high polymer eraser in black. I just love the look of it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, this Mono Zero Eraser, what I love about this I just got this yesterday, so is that it's thin. Look at that. How cool. So that's what it looks like. And I got the refills for it. There's two in a pack. And I needed something to keep in my notebook or like my mod case that's super thin because this is the old one that I've had since like college high school I don't even know first of all this thing is like becoming super loose and it's just a matter of time this is gonna snap off second of all look at how small this is compared to the bulk of this one this is all I need I just need a little something to erase my pencil marks or when I'm doing crossword puzzles. So they have a rounded one too, but I thought I would try the just the slim rectangle one. Very minimal design, I love it. Those are the refills. And then also from the Erasable Podcast, um, I've heard a lot about the these pencils, so I thought I would give them a try. Especially the Mitsubishi, they did mention that. Um, so I got a 4B Mitsubishi, a Tombow Lakia, and a 2B, and then a Tombow Mon Monor in a 6B. I love B pencils. Bs are my favorite graphite type because they're soft. I don't care if they smear. I just love the, the way it writes and the darkness of the graphite. <clears throat> so that's what I got at Kinokuniya. Um, I did purchase off Amazon a box of the Blackwing Pearl pencils, and as you can see, I've already tried it. I have the Blackwing regular, like, soft pencils, which I love very much. I think this by far is my favorite Palomino pencil so far. And let's get it back in here. But I wanted to try out the Pearl and I knew I wanted to keep have the box as well because I will be using these and as just kind of like a collector's item. I wanted to just have all of them in the boxes as possible. So they come in a dozen. They're 
I guess it, a lot of people think that they're rather expensive for pencils because if you buy these individually, they're about $2. If you buy the whole box, they come out to about like $22, um, which I don't think really bothers me because if you really think about it, $2 a pencil versus say I buy a dozen of these, which is like already $27, $28, nearly $30. Um, and these are the Uniball Vision. <coughs> Excuse me. They're disposable as well. And um, I don't know, these last a long time. You'd be surprised at how long you can go using a pencil. So I think maybe because people view these as like disposable items that's expensive, but honestly, um, it kind of goes for like a bottle of ink, you know, like the Jane Austen ink right there is like $12. And you might think that that's rather expensive, but you would get so much use out of that bottle of ink and how long it lasts when you fill your cartridges. And compared to say, like a fountain pen, um, pencils are a cheaper way to go if you love using them for journaling. So I think these are just great collector's items too. If you have a stationary lover in your life, they're just so beautiful. They're classic and the packaging is beautiful. They're quality made, very cool. A friend of mine at the meetup um, had the Blackwing 602 as well and I got to try it out. And I thought I would not like it because the graphite is a lot harder than the Pro and the regular soft version, but <clears throat> As it turns out, it was a very nice pencil that's still soft. Um, so I think I will be getting the Blackwing 602s in the future, just to kind of round out the basic Blackwing versions. Um, tea, I love tea. I haven't talked about tea in a long time. Uh, we recently placed a big Fortnum's order because I got a big advent calendar from them. Sorry, I'm distracted. My bunny's on top of a box and she's just kind of jumping around. She's so happy today. Um, and uh, we did get a couple things of Countess Grey tea, which is one of my favorites. And I've run out for a long time. I haven't had it in over a year. So I got the big tin. My husband is so sweet. He, he ordered two uh, because he says that if I had the one, I would just pickle it and I would just never touch it and only have it on special occasions. <laughs> So he said he got me one to keep as a backup and then one so I can actually drink it. So um, it's a beautiful kind of like orange pico. Can I open this without? Let me see if I can open this without breaking a nail. Um, it's this beautiful orange pico black tea and it, oh, it smells divine. I wish... There was smell of vision because as soon as I've opened the tin, this whole area just smells of orange pico black tea. I love it. So if you love a milder, uh, kind of vibrant tea, I highly recommend the Countess Grey. Unfortunately, um, William Sonoma, which has expanded their little mini Fortnum and Mason section, carries just the basic teas, but they don't carry the Countess Grey, which is the reason why that we added it to the order. Um, but it's it's such a vibrant tea. It's not a strong orange flavor. You just get a hint of it. It's kind of like an orange, um, not the orange blossom smell or scent, but it has that kind of essence to it. I highly recommend it if you are into a very light black tea so there it is that is my recent favorite tea and just and the citrus kind of goes with the you know now that it's getting to the holiday season and all that um tools to live by I did put in a small order because I wanted to upgrade my scissors as you can see this pair that I've just used to open that tin has been with me since like middle school I've had this for so long and you know what, it served me well, but you can see that there's a gap in between. It does not cut very well, because it's kind of warped. And now it's just kind of become the utility scissors. But I really wanted to upgrade things on my desk that I've had 
just because they were functional and they were getting me by, but I want to elevate it now. Um, and that's why I have this stationary minimalism list. There's just like things that I want to get eventually to just kind of upgrade things slowly. And tools to live by is definitely an investment just because, especially if you're living in the United States, shipping is terribly high and usually more than some of the items that you'll be buying. So you usually have to make up uh, for the shipping or just really be smart with what you're purchasing. And um, I decided to get just the very smaller pair of black scissors. Super smooth. Look at that, no gap. You can see that the blade is straight. I love that. But you can hear that. I don't know, I'm a scissors geek. I love scissors. I love collecting them because they're such a useful tool for many things. My husband already knows that this is not the pair to use for cutting packages. Because this is now uh, <laughs> then demoted to packages and, you know, zip ties and stuff. But this is merely for stationary, washi, um, for my use only, basically. And then I just decided to throw in this cute, like, aluminum, very lightweight, like, vintage-looking clip to hold pages open. So that's what I got from Tools to Live By. And then finally, I got some notebooks while we were at Powell's Books in Portland. This really cool stargazing one. That intrigued me. I'm really into like moon cycles and things like that. It just fascinates me and you can just log in your observations. I love that. I thought this would be a great thing to have like while we go camping. I've wanted to try the Field Notes dime novel, mostly because um, it's not the same size as your regular um, Field Notes. Let me see if I can find one here. So here's a pack of the Moon Phases ones. That's how big it is. <clears throat> They're a lot thicker. You get two volumes. and. I've stopped buying a lot of these because after like this pack and trying to use them, the ink, the paper quality is terrible. I'm not a fan of Field Notes paper. I think if you write with pencil, that's fine, but most of the time I use these for story writing and at the time I was using a lot of just like fountain pen, my Uniball Vision pens, and they just, they bleed all over. I'm not a fan of the paper. And I have recently um, heard from the Erasable podcast that they are looking to improve that one day, but that's just not on the radar at the moment. And with the dime novel, I heard that they did use a heavier paperweight for this. And so that really intrigued me because not only of the Americana sort of like history behind why this design came about and where it came from. The paper quality really intrigued me. So I definitely want to try that out. Sewn seam binding. I just, oh, it's just so, so cool. And I love the, the color scheme of it. And it looks like it's blank paper. So I love blank paper. It's just my preferred paper type and then I also heard a ton about Baron Fig. Um, I don't know much about the brand but they seem to be very popular uh, especially with a lot of men who use stationery. I think just because of the minimal design. It's very no nonsense, no frills. They're sewn in uh, notebooks. I got the like stone gray and this is the Vanguard style. So probably just what they call the size. And I am, it's a notebook for thinkers designed with a philosophy of simplicity, usefulness, and community. I've heard a lot of interviews from those guys um, that uh, created Baron Fig. I've checked out their website. The only thing that really interested me were the um, notebooks, but they do have the Archer pencil, which seems to be popular. I might try that out later just because I'm on this pencil kick but there it is that is my recent haul video <laughs> like I said it's not the not all of it so I do have another one coming but I wanted to show you guys just to give you some ideas if you're looking for some new things 
you might be wondering why I bought all this stuff because I'm on this minimalism uh, journey. Minimalism is not about not shopping. It's about being aware of what you're buying and buying only things that you know you'll use, that you know you'll love, and you know, that doesn't mean that you can't experiment a little. I do have some things here that I've never tried. I did buy them to try them out, but I'm not going crazy. When I went to Kino Kinia, I could have just spent like hundreds of dollars there just on like the pencil and pen selection alone. But I didn't, I just got what I knew I wanted to try out recently and that's what it is. Don't feel guilty about buying something if you are a self-proclaimed minimalist or that you're on this journey to declutter your stash because that is just not how you should see yourself um, as like a person who should feel guilty for buying something because we all deserve to go shopping when we can. If you have the money, go ahead, treat yourself. Buy the things that you love. This is my passion. This is one of the few things in my life that I allow myself to spend like so much money on and like I said these were most of these things were on my list for a while so it's not like I was just kind of willy-nilly just randomly buying things so if you are struggling with that where you feel like when you do buy something and then you just feel bad or you just kind of go into this panic don't just don't feel that way enjoy your supplies you can buy things once in a while now if you're buying things every other day without really thinking about it then that's maybe something that you need to reevaluate um, if you're on that stationary minimalism journey but if you are just a person who's passionate about it and you know this is something that you want to try and use and you know you'll love go ahead have at it um, minimalism is not a number it's different for everybody and interpret it how you want so I hope that I know I just kind of like went off on a tangent about that but um, I know I get a lot of comments about um, you know shopping versus like trying to declutter and it always comes off as um, you know like people are feeling guilty but you shouldn't I kind of felt guilty with all this but honestly like I said I know I'll use all these things I cherish all my things I take care of my things and it's not getting hidden away in some cabinet where I don't look at it for six months so I hope that kind of um, helps you if you're struggling with that bit of stationary minimalism so I apologize for the long video I will end it here I hope you are doing so very well and that you're enjoying the close to um, holiday weekend for the uh, residents of the US if you celebrate I hope you are doing well in your journals and I will see you in my next video bye